SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is the standard query language that is used for manipulation and retrieval of data across all databases. I'd really never been able to wrap my head around what happens within my database in between the moment of execution of my query and the generation of results. So this made me plunge into research and in this video I'll be culminating everything I've learned and with the aid of a visualization tool I'll be showing you what actually happens between that moment of the execution of your query and the generation of the result. I believe the understanding of this is going to help you understand how to optimize your query much more better to get much faster performance. Let's dive right in guys. So let's say we have a database management studio and um, we we start to enter a query which is select name gender um, age from a particular table and this table is called user profile and we have a condition that says where age is greater than 23 next thing you want to do is to obviously run the query and then it loads and then it generates some results this is what we are used to all right which is fine except for the fact that as a back-end engineer or software engineer, we do not like black box. We want to be able to understand what is actually happening within that process so that we are able to understand how to tune the performance to suit our use case. All right. So we're going to get rid of the result for now, get rid of the database management studio and just focus on the query. This is the query that we want to analyze. The first step is what we call query passing. So what happens is that our query is passed into a particular component within the database called a query parser. And the functionality of the query parser, just like we have it in all other programming language, the functionality of the query parser is to actually understand what our query is trying to do. It tries to study our query and understand what we are trying to achieve. And it also does the job of identifying keywords, tokens within our query. In our case, we have um, tokens like select. So now our query parser understands that this is a select statement because it has studied the query. So it knows that this is a select statement. And within those select statements, it knows that we have some columns. There are some columns that we want to select. It knows we have a from, which is a keyword. It knows we have a conditional keyword as well, which is where. Now, within all of our columns, it is able to identify all of the columns that we actually want to select. In our case, we are selecting ID, name, gender, and it's also able to pick our from. So it, it knows that we are saying we want to get all of this data from a user table. And it knows that we also want to have um, some condition attached to that query. All right, which is age greater than 23. Once this is done, what our query parser basically does is to generate what is called a past token tree. Uh, you can say this is your past token tree. All right, this is decomposed token tree and it passes it to the next component, which is called a query binder. In our case, this is the query binder. So what the query bind, what the query binder component actually does is to help to resolve keywords in cases whereby you have things like aliases you have some table names and the likes there are situations whereby um, your table name is probably wrong or the object you are trying to reference maybe in your select is actually wrong say for example you said name you spelled name as n m e rather than n a n e so all of those validations and all of those um, confirmation to be sure that your table actually exists, to be sure that your columns, your object are spelled correctly, all of this functionality is done within the query binder. And it does it by using a particular component called Algebraizer. Algebraizer, it does it by using this particular component called Algebraizer. So as I said, just a little bit of recap, the query parser passes the past token tree, which is our output from the query parser, into the query binder. And the query binder uses this algebraizer to resolve, to validate objects, to make sure that our table is actually correct, to make sure that the columns that we're trying to select are actually valid, to make sure that our conditionals are actually valid by using the right syntax. 
Now, if there is a case whereby, for example, the table we are trying to access does not exist, this process is going to be altered here. It's going to be altered and you're going to get an error message. All right. So the query binder uses the algebraizer and it generates what is called the query processor tree. The query processor tree is then passed to the query optimizer. The query processor tree contains two particular components, which is the hash and the code value. This is what the optimizer needs to actually do its own job. Now, the optimizer assumes that the query is correct. All of the columns in our case, all of the columns are correct. The table actually exists within the database. Now, the query optimizer actually needs the hash and the coded value. The coded value in this case is your query actually. And the hash is more like a GUID or something like an ID. So basically, when the query optimizer finish executing its own job, it generates what is called an execution plan. And most of the time, the execution plan is always saved within, the, within a catch. And the reason why it's saved within the catch is so that if you execute that same query, the query optimizer knows that it has previously generated an execution plan for that same query. So rather than the query optimizer trying to generate a new execution plan, it simply goes to the plan catch, gets the previous execution plan for that same query and use that execution plan. All right. So we need this particular hash. So what the query optimizer does with this hash is to check the catch to be sure that it doesn't have an existing um, plan within the plan catch for this particular query. And even if it finds a particular plan, it also validates that that plan is still valid because plan would usually have an expiry period. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what the query optimizer does is to figure out different way by which this particular um, query can be executed and then calculates the cost, tries to calculate the cost of all of this method and then pick the most efficient method. That's what the query optimizer basically does. And as I said, the output that the query optimizer is going to be generating is called the execution plan. And now it sends this execution plan to the query execution engine. So what the query execution engine basically does is to use this execution plan. The query engine is not, it's not doing a lot of things. It just basically opens the execution plan and then executes the query according to the execution plan. The query execution engine cannot change the execution plan. It follows through with the execution plan. However, there are times whereby the query execution engine would have to force the query optimizer to recompile so it can generate new execution plan. By using this execution plan, the query execution engine simply executes the query and then it generates the results as usual. These are the various components that are responsible for actually executing your query within the shortest period of time and using the most efficient and using the most efficient algorithm. That will be it for this week, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.